this year, I had to make a choice, keep or lose my breasts. In many senses, my choice was ironic, but 2019, while being extraordinarily challenging, has also been the year that I've finally fully and completely embraced being who I am, as I am, in my own skin. And I feel so good about it. Thus, this quite androgynous girl became very much invested in keeping her breasts. I first knew shame over not fitting the standard girl mold as a five-year-old. I mean, the first time I really knew it. I was in the first grade and a total tomboy. I played with my Captain America doll and my race cars, liked to be rough and tumble, and generally didn't think a thing about it. Until one day, when I was on the playground with my two best friends, who were boys, we were on the giant tractor tires, leaping from one side to the other, playing some sort of run from monster game. Suddenly, some other older kids came up to us. They glared at me from the other side of the tire and boldly exclaimed, hey boy, what are you doing? You are a boy, aren't you? I emphatically shouted back, no I'm not, I'm a girl. They kept on. The more, they the more I denied, the more they had me. Finally, they shouted, prove it, pull down your pants. I didn't cave to that command. Somehow I knew that it was more important to protect myself than prove myself. I was humiliated. I was beside myself with the injustice of it, of being judged just for being me. I never told anyone what happened. I just suffered through it, somehow feeling I was responsible. Even 45 years later, I still feel the indignation of being judged as somehow bad for not being a girly girl my hackles still rise from my five-year-old self, told she was something she wasn't and not believed. The resonance of it being wrong to be who I am followed me for decades. A few years later, I was at camp with my brother. It was our standard week on some miscellaneous school break that we were sent to every year. A day at the zoo, one day at Mission Bay Park, one day at go-karts. The conclusion of camp was always a sleepover at their facility at a Carlsbad Lagoon. That was the best part of camp every time. The year I was seven, I remember playing football with a whole posse of kids. It was hot, I was running hard and super sweaty as a result. Some of the boys took their shirts off to be more comfortable. I thought that was brilliant, so logical. And with that, I took mine off. <laughs> Suddenly there were adults near me, no, no, it's not okay, you, you can't take your shirt off, put it back on. I put my shirt back on, utterly shamed and embarrassed, absolutely confused. What was any different about my young, flat, bare torso than the other seven-year-olds who happened to be boys? Oddly, this time I'd exposed myself at my own volition to equally shameful results as my refusal to pull down my pants. Again, I told no one when I was 10, my mom, hippie self-improvement seminar junkie that she is, booked a month-long work study for herself at Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California. It was the late 70s, and Esalen was the new age self-study, self-exploration place to be. My brother and I were both going to go with her and stay the month as well. It started great. My mom made a road trip at the beginning of it, building our excitement for the month ahead. We drove in our old Mercedes first up to LA in a day at Universal Studios. I recall my brother chortling at my terror at Jaws approaching our stalled tram car, and then the wonder of the magic behind the parting of the Red Sea. We had a blast. The plan was, after Universal Studios and a night in LA, we would drive up the 101 and then to the 1 for a brief initial stop at Esalen. Then we would head to San Francisco for a few tourist days there, all before the actual start of my mom's program. I remember the beauty of the Big Sur Mountains. Esalen had lush grounds overlooking the ocean, and I can still picture the spectacular pool perched near the cliffs with its amazing view. If you've never heard of Esalen, I should explain. <laughs> it makes Black's Beach in the 70s look tame. Along with the incredibly diverse assortment of 
without their self-improvement workshops they hold, the norm at Esalen is to sunbathe and swim nude. My brother was 12 and just hitting puberty. I was young and innocent. He emphatically did not want to swim nude. <laughs> Truthfully, I was scared to as well, but mostly followed his lead. Our mom said it was okay to wear suits, so we did. As we got to the edge of the pool, we were greeted by the heckles of a posse of local children. Loud calls of, chicken shits, and come on, what are you scared of? And derisive laughter boomed out from the six or so kids in the pool. We fled to trailing laughter. More calls of, chicken shits, echoing after us. When we got to San Francisco, my brother announced he did not want to go back to Esalen. Who could blame him? So my mom put him on a plane home to our dad's house. It was palpably clear that she was disappointed, but she didn't fight him leaving. She told me he was too uncomfortable with what had happened because of this puberty thing. She didn't ask if I was okay. I couldn't even consider disappointing her. So I said, nothing. And so it was just me and mom going back to Esalen. Now I didn't have my big brother as protection. If I was going to survive a month, there was no way I was going to be called a chicken shit again. The first day back, I can recall boldly ripping off all my clothes to jump in the pool. Thankfully, there were no remarks of any kind. I soon buried away the memory of us being called chicken shits. I acclimated to the culture there. It was a beautiful place. My mom was working in the garden. At first, I was just footloose and free to roam the grounds, swim, and just generally explore. After a few days, I was uh, informed that everyone was expected to do some sort of a job while there. I was given a few options. Help with the younger kids? Pass. Work in the garden? Definitely pass. Kitchen help? Yeah, no thanks. They had an old boat off in the northern part of the property that was being refinished to use as part of their school. Somehow, that was the only thing that appealed to me. Perhaps it was the hands-on work. Or maybe it was my subconscious rebelling against stereotypical girl jobs. But I loved the solitude of it. I remember sanding the wood of the boat inside and out. There was one man who was in charge, always there working. And usually the help was just me and one other kid, a boy. It was peaceful work and never too hard, despite being physical labor. It was just such a serene place. It felt safe and accepting. One day in particular, it was really warm and sunny. I was working on the outside of the boat, and I was so hot. I remember reasoning out that I was at Esalen, where everyone swam in the pool, lay out for massages near the mineral hot springs, and sunbathed nude. Clearly, it must be a place of freedom from judgment. So with that, I took my shirt off my still flat-chested, totally prepubescent tomboy self, and the man. And the boy, the looks they gave me. It was immediately clear I was wrong. How wrong was I, a girl, to remove my shirt? Even at Esalen, where regularly people were completely nude, I waited a slight interval until it wouldn't seem quite like I was doing it in response to their looks. And I put my shirt back on. As a kid, I never did fully understand why taking my shirt off was wrong, but I know that it felt like there was something wrong with me. Somehow, I was bad. I was less, and it was not okay. As before, I kept my plate to myself. And this was all before I even had breasts. Once I did, oh man, all the time boys and later men stared at them instead of looking at my face. Cat calls while running, while walking. The short, beer-bellied, pervy VP of IT at work who made excuses to come see me in my office and stared at my chest the whole time. Worrying about how to wear my base so as not to accentuate my breasts. Worrying over my nipples showing through my shirts. And so in February of this year, when I was diagnosed with bilateral breast cancer, and I was faced with the onerous decision of double mastectomies or lumpectomies, very arguably the obvious choice would have been 
lose those shameful breasts. Only they're not shameful. With these breasts, I nursed my child, providing her with both sustenance and bonding. With these breasts and how they add to my physical form, I feel clearly demarked as female despite how I carry myself or what I choose to wear. These breasts now sit in my brain as a perfect juxtaposition of my still tomboy self and my inner femininity. These breasts add, oh, so, so much to lovemaking. The indescribably exquisite, breath-catching pleasure of my girl running her hands, her lips, her tongue over them. How could I ever want to lose any of that? Unlike many, I was fortunate in my cancer journey to have the choice. And I didn't want cancer to take away what I'd finally found, me. I've finally embraced myself as I am. No shame, not about who I am, how I look, or who I love. Yes, I'm a woman. Under the jeans and t-shirts I practically live in, I'm curvy and I'm soft strong in body and spirit, while also feeling intensely and crying so easily. I tend to strut and bear myself in a masculine way and occasionally get make it mistaken as a sir. I am who I am, not who anyone else wants me to be. I bear my skin for whom I please without shame. And damn it, I have breasts and I fucking kept them. Give it up for Kelly Bowen, everybody. Another vamp first-timer.